already. Grace and peace, everybody. Today is Sunday, May 29th, 2022. Welcome to the Christ Fellowship Baptist Church Sunday School Meeting, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. My name is Dolores Gerald, and I will be your facilitator for this meeting. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.ChristFellowshipBaptistChurch.org. Our lesson today is titled, The Spiritual Fruit of Freedom. It is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. So get your Bibles out and let us pray. Oh, Father God, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself, for being the great I am, the Holy One. Hallelujah. We thank you for sitting high and looking low and seeing each and every one of us and meeting us in the place of our need, for knowing every hair on our head and every thought in our heart and every step that we take and every situation that we face. We thank you. We thank you for being a part of our every day. We just thank you for being God. Father God, we're coming before you right now asking you to forgive us of anything that we have said, done, thought that was not pleasing in your sight. Father, we ask you to forgive us. I ask right now, Father, you bless each and every person who thought it not robbery to get up this morning and come and seek your face. Those that are here now, those that are to come, Father God. I ask right now you bless every household and every household of faith, Father God, and every pastor over those households of faith. Father, I ask a blessing on the pastors. Gird them up on every week and lean inside, Father God. Put a hedge of protection around them and their families, Father God, as they go about doing the work that you've called them to do in the vineyard. A special blessing on my pastor, the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. Father God, I ask right now that you prepare every heart, every mind, every ear, every eye to receive whatever it is and every spirit to receive Whatever it is that Holy Spirit has for us today, hide me behind the cross that I might not be seen. Holy Spirit, you stand up, you do the teaching. I will sit down. I will be your mouthpiece. I ask right now, Father God, that you you be in the midst of whatever it is. Give me clarity of speech. Give me clarity of eyes to see. Give me an ear to hear if you have something to say. Oh, Father God, just use me to the glory of your kingdom. We ask all of these blessings in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Grace and peace. Okay, Aunt Didi, read. Yes, thank you. So I say, live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Aunt Didi. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now we got some digging to do, y'all. Okay. We've been studying freedom, the freedom given to us in Christ. And up to now, we've learned that we who believe in Jesus as our King, Lord, and Savior have been purchased and redeemed from the bondage of sin. 
We are saved and justified by faith in Christ alone. We have authority in Jesus' name over the power of sin in our lives. And by the power of Holy Spirit, we've been sealed as children of the Father and can walk in the newness of life. This truth, when it's implanted in our mind, allows us to uproot the old thoughts, the concepts, the old beliefs, the traditions, the superstitions of the world, and choose the way of Christ and life rather than sin and death. And this truth gives us a new mindset. It gives us the mind of Christ. In our study in this book of Galatians, we've learned how the Gentiles, Gentile believers in Galatia were led astray and confused by the teachings of Jewish Christians called Judaizers. Um, this letter from Paul was a directive telling them the correct teachings of Jesus and instructing them to remove the false teachings of the Judaizers from their midst. We learned that we have liberty from the requirements of the works of the law, that the works of the law that lead to lead to bondage, that the law could not give life or justification. And anyone who follows the law are literally placing themselves under a curse rather than maintaining pardon, liberty, and freedom in Christ. Paul is telling them that it is only by faith, a heart and mind condition to believe in Christ and by Holy Spirit that anyone can even hope for righteousness now and in the age to come. That sin is like leaven. If you don't do something to counter it, sin will put you in a yoke and lead you to destruction. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are fire baptized by Holy Spirit. When he takes up residence in your spirit, he stops the spread of sin in your spirit. He cleanses or justifies you and leads you in the way of righteousness. Paul instructed the Galatians and us to remove the leaven of false doctrines from the midst. Because if left unaddressed, they will infiltrate the infrastructure of our faith, undermine its integrity, and lead us off the path of righteousness onto the path of destruction. Proverbs 14 and 12 says it well. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Amen. So let us go the way of life. We finished our lesson last week with Paul's warning that the ongoing contentions in the factions inside of Galatia would result in harm on both sides. And no one would be victorious because they were not treating each other in love. And here starts today's lesson. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. <clears throat> Paul continues with his advice to the Galatians. He's telling them, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, he's encouraging the Galatians to allow Holy Spirit to have dominion in their lives. When Holy Spirit is allowed to have his way, then the mind of Christ is in you and will direct you in how to handle any situation that confronts you. We humans are creatures of the flesh. We have emotions, desires, and ambitions. As we walk in this life, any one of these combinations, any one of those things or combination of those things may be may affect us and the influences that affects us will determine how we live. How we respond to these influences can either be by our own mind, which is the sinful nature, or by the mind of Christ through Holy Spirit. Romans 6 verse 12 says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Amen. Everyone has something that can trigger a negative response in them. It could be something small or big, but to the individual affected, it is definitely significant. When you react according to the sinful nature, you allow sin to reign in you in that situation. And that is definitely not walking in the spirit. Romans chapter 6 verses 13 and 14 says, Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. Amen. When we submit to Holy Spirit and allow him to direct us, we grow in the faith. Growth in the faith will help you walk in the Spirit. Growth in the faith will enable you to discern when Holy Spirit is speaking to you or if your selfish sinful nature is speaking. Growth in the faith of Jesus Christ will give you discernment, the ability to hear and understand by Holy Spirit before making decisions. 
Discernment by Holy Spirit will guide you in the way most pleasing to the Father so that you are able to walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 5 says, <coughs> For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So set your mind on the things of the Spirit and have the mind of Christ and thereby walk in the Spirit. The more often you consciously follow the promptings of Holy Spirit, the more you will be able to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do the things that you wish. But if you were led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. Paul then explains why we must walk in the Spirit. Simply put, Holy Spirit and the sinful nature are contrary to one another and are therefore always at odds and in conflict with each other. The two natures that dwell in us, our holy nature through Holy Spirit and our sinful nature through the flesh, are at war for dominance in our lives. Paul expresses this dilemma in Romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 21. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. And it says in part, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in the, my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. I've discovered this principle in life, that when I want to do what's right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Amen. That is the summation of the war between our natures. However, the solution to our dilemma is to be led by, led by and walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 verses 5 to 8 in the New Living Translation says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind needs to, leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Amen. That's why we must crucify the sinful nature daily. That is why we must put on Christ and pick up our cross daily. That is why we must have the mind of Christ so that the sinful nature cannot have dominance. Crucifixion is a slow way to die. The one being crucified can linger between life and death for quite a while before dying. That's why the sinful nature keeps interfering in our lives because it doesn't want to die. And it doesn't want to submit. It wants to dominate. How do we keep it in subjection to holy nature? James chapter 4 verses 7 and 10 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. We cannot do this in our own power. And anyone who thinks they can are only deluding themselves. We can only dominate the sinful nature by the power of Holy Spirit and by allowing Holy Spirit to have control in us. <coughs> Paul refers to the law and the bondage under the law again when he says, If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. Allowing Holy Spirit to be controlled or have dominance in us gives us liberty in Christ. It gives us the mind of Christ so that we can do the things that are pleasing to God. And by things, I don't mean works. I'm referring to godly thoughts that generate godly accent, actions demonstrating that you're walking in the command, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. James chapter 3 verses thir verse 13 says, Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. And Romans 13 verse 10 says, Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. That is the essence of walking in the spirit. Are there any questions or any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Okay. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21. Now, 
The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. After giving instructions to be led by the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit, Paul now gives a long list of things that are evidence that a person is not walking in the Spirit. He lists things that are transgressions against Yahweh. They are idolatry and sorcery or witchcraft, heresies and dissensions, which are actions that place something above Yahweh in the place of worship. He lists transgressions against oneself. That are hatred and adultery, fornication and drunkenness, revelries, self, selfish ambitions, uncleanness and lewdness, which are detestable actions before Yahweh. Actions that cause a person to defile themselves and become an abomination before Yahweh. He lists transgressions against others, which is hatred, hatred adultery, fornication, revelries or orgies, um, contentions, dissensions, envies, murders, jealousies, and outbursts of wrath, which causes offenses to others, which can cause them then to turn away from God. In Matthew 18, verses 6 and 7, Jesus says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a millstone placed around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses come. Amen. Paul then goes on to say concerning the works of the flesh. Of which I tell you beforehand. As I told you before. As I told you in times past. That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Note. It was a common practice for an epistle written to one church location in biblical times to be copied and shared with other churches for their instruction and edification in the faith. Paul had said, the, Paul had said to the believers in Ephesus, in Ephesus 5 verse 3, This you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. And then he said in his first epistle to the believers in Corinth and 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So Paul is reminding the Galatians that their transgressions could disqualify them from their inheritance in the kingdom. Hebrews 10 verses 26 to 31 says in part, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. And Romans 1 verse 28 to 32 says, And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, I mean, they received it, but disregarded it. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. Murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice these things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. 
if you slip into sin and don't come back out and repent, you can wind up in condemnation and damnation. However, if they repent, glory be to God, that is return to the faith in Christ, they will be restored. Romans chapter 2 verses 23 and 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And Jesus says in Matthew 24 verses 12 and 13, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Last week, our lesson also charged us to examine our faith walk. We were reminded that life can get in the way of our faith walk. The issues of life can distract us from the things of the kingdom. If we allow situations and circumstances to take precedence or first place rather than the Father and the Son, we also run the risk of being led astray from the way of Christ. Our faith walk is not a sprint, it's a marathon with hills, valleys, pits, traps, snares and other dangers however with the indwelling of holy spirit and allowing him to be in the driver's seat we will navigate all the hazards and hindrances placed in our way and arrive safely in the kingdom at the end of our faith journey glory be to god hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 says let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 and 25 says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all one, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown. And James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. Any questions? Any comments? Okay. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Amen. Paul brought to light the works of the flesh so that every believer who read his epistle could examine themselves. Now he lists the fruit of the Spirit, those characteristics that would reveal the work of the Holy Spirit in us. This too can be a self-examination. If we ask Holy Spirit to reveal us, to ourselves we he will show us areas in our lives that that we need to let go of and allow the Lord Holy Spirit to take over and submit to the will of the Father the attributes of the Holy of the fruit of the Spirit the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit bear closer examination and so here we go here their definitions love in the Greek this word is agape because there's many forms of love. But this word is agape, which is brotherly love or affect, affection, goodwill, or benevolence. All right? This is the love of men towards God, the love of God towards man, the love of God towards Christ, the love of Christ towards men, the unconditional love of the Father. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus says in John 13, verses 34 and 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 said, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but joy rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Amen. The second characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is joy, which means cheerfulness as in a calm delight or gladness, a, a feeling of great pleasure and happiness, or to rejoice. To feel or show great or exuberant joy or delight. 
Jesus says in John 15 verses 11 and 12, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says, Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And Psalms 118.24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The third characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. It is a state of tranquility, harmony, harmony security, safety, prosperity, and contentedness. Peace of the Messiah is the way that leads to peace. Peace of Christians is the tranquil state of the soul that is assured of salvation through Christ. And so, not fearing wrath from God, they are content with their earthly lot. Jesus says in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Philippians 4, verse 7 says, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds, through Christ Jesus. Amen. The fourth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering, which is patience, endurance, or constancy, which is faithful, patient endurance. It's steadfastness, which is firm, unwavering resolution. It is perseverance, which is persistence to continue. It is forbearance, which is tolerant self-control and slowness in avenging wrongs. Mark 13 verse 13 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. That is perseverance. That's long-suffering. The fifth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is kindness or gentleness, depending on your translation uh, of, of the Bible. It is moral goodness and integrity. And integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. And moral uprightness. It is benignity, kindness, or tolerance towards others. It is kindness, the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. It is gentleness, the quality of being kind, tender, or mild-mannered. It is merciful, which is compassionate, tender-hearted, kind, patient, tolerant, indulgent, generous, and benevolent. Matthew 5 verse 7 is, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And James 3 verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. The sixth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. It's the quality of being morally good or virtuous. It's uprightness of heart and life. It's kindness. Matthew 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. The seventh characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is faith or faithfulness, depending on your translation. Faith is trust, holy fervor, conviction, confidence, or belief concerning one's relationship to God or Christ and divine things. It's, it's conviction of the truth of anything. It is belief. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the conviction that God exists. And that he's the creator and ruler of all things. And the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. It's a strong conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah. Through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is loyalty, constancy, devotion, true heartedness, dedication. Dedication, commitment, allegiance, adherence, dependability, reliability, trustworthiness, staunchness, and steadfastness. Some of which we covered under long suffering. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58, it says, Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And Hebrews 3 verse 14 says, but we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Matthew 25 verse 21 says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. 
enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen. The eighth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is meekness or gentleness. Meekness is peacefulness, modesty, humility, unpretentiousness, lowliness, submissiveness, compliance, obedience, deference, patience, long-suffering, forbearance, and compassion. Matthew 5 verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 18 verse 4 says, Therefore whoever humbles themselves, humbles themselves as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. The ninth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit, as Paul has listed here, is temperance or self-control, which is restraint or self-restraint, moderation, self-discipline, lack of indulgence, abstinence, self-denial. It is the virtue of one who masters his desires and passions. Proverbs 25 verse 28 says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit, own spirit is like a city with broken down, which is broken down without walls. Let me read that again. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. That means you have no defenses, you have nothing. Romans 13 verse 14 says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Amen. We are need to ask Holy Spirit to help us grow in the Spirit so that we can walk in the Spirit and manifest the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus says in John 15 verses 1 to 5, I am the true vine and my father is the vintager. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Unless it abides in the brine, the vine, neither can you. Unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Peter speaks of being fruitful in the faith this way. In 2 Peter 1 verses 5 to 9. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. To virtue knowledge. To knowledge self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he, has, he was cleansed from his own sins. Amen. Ephesians 5 verses 8 and 9 says, Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Amen. Paul declares that the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit that manifest in the believer will reveal that they are under control of Holy Spirit. Those who abide in Christ and allow Holy Spirit to be in control will manifest the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Then, submission to Holy Spirit and the acts, deeds, and behaviors that result from that submission will not bring them into the violation of the law. Any questions? That de that deserves a hallelujah and an amen. Oh, my, those two verses. Oh, girl, <laughs> you told it. You told it. Amen, amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay. Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 through 26. And those who are Christ, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the flesh, let us also walk. No, I said that wrong. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be come to conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Paul, after he lists the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit, reiterates those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Remember, crucifixion is a long, slow death. It is certain death, but it takes a while for the one crucified to die. Romans 6, verse 6 and 7 says, Knowing this, that our own man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. 
And Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. We and the body of Christ have to take on the mindset that the sinful nature is dead to us. And when it starts thrashing around in the throes of its death, trying to get our attention, we need to turn our backs to it and turn toward Holy Spirit in our holy nature and submit to him and allow him to be in control so that he can subdue the rebellion of the sinful nature. By submitting to Holy Spirit, we will live in the spirit, in the presence of the Father in us. By these deliberate actions, we will crucify the flesh and keep it in subjection to the holy nature. And this way we can walk in the spirit. Paul puts in one more directive. He says, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. The King James Version uses the tame term vain glory, which is the action of seeking honor, recognition, and accolades from others. It is the praise of people that causes conceit, making a person think that they, more, that they are more than they are. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says for I say to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly amen conceit in a person can make them look down on others it can cause them to treat others as less than which can cause offenses on the other hand if a person thinks they should be honored by others and they are not it can broke it can provoke in them an offensive attitude and create strife and contentions Think of Haman in the book of Esther. Then again, one person may be receiving accolades and another may believe that they are more deserving of those accolades, which causes jealousies and envies. Unfortunately, these things happen in the church today. There are some who think they deserve praise and do not get it, and so are offended, causing them to become jealous or envious. There are some who receive praise from others and become conceited and start thinking they deserve the praise. Still, there are others who want to be in charge and are not, so they go about causing dissensions, discords, and strife. None of these behaviors are Christ-like and reveal that the sinful nature has not been put into subjection to the Holy Spirit. Paul is reminding the Galatians of the warning he gave them in Galatians 15 and Galatians 5 verses 14 and 15. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Amen. Again, this is a call to do a self-examination. We need to ask Holy Spirit to reveal ourselves to us. Most of us will not see our own faults and others may not tell you about them for various reasons. Colossians 3 verses 12 to 15 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love which is the bond of perfection and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Amen. If we do this, we will surely live and walk in the spirit and manifest the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. That's my lesson. Y'all any comments, any questions, any comments, any questions? Uh, that was just, mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you read it over and over, but it's just so beautiful to hear. You know, it's all about love. It's all about love. You know, love, oh my God, it conquers so many things. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Oh, hallelujah. And it covers a multitude of sins to boot. Amen. Yes. And yes. You can actually love your enemy. Yes. Yes. You can love your enemy. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Didi, you are muted. What did you want to say? I just wanted to thank you for the research that you do. You, you quoted where these verses are in the Bible that back up and confirm everything that you're saying. I, I learned so much and I'm very grateful. When you said that we have to crucify the sinful nature, and crucifixion is a long um, 
process. Oh, process yeah. that, that made so many things clearer for me. Um, your sinful nature is not just going to die. No. It's going to, as you said, die and then thrash around in its death throes and come back to try to mess with you anyway. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do when that happens is remember what is happening and turn more to God who can take care of that. Yes. You don't have to deal with that. You don't have to, because it can, it can kind of pull you in a direction where you don't want to go. What you want to do is turn completely away from that right. and, and turn more to God mm -hmm. whose strength can handle that. Yep. You don't need to deal with that. Now that made so many things clear. Why do things pop up that I, I know in my head, I shouldn't be dealing with that. I shouldn't be thinking like that. What is that? <laughs> and it can be very frustrating yeah. and it can, and it can kind of throw you off, yep. but I don't have to deal with that. Nope. Turn to God and he'll deal with that. That's right. I also like, I love when you say something and then you refer to the verse in the Bible that says, this is what I'm saying. And this is why I'm saying it. And you can read it for yourself if you want to. Amen. I love that. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. A wonderful, wonderful lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And Amen. I can, I, can I respond to Aunt Didi's um, comment? Go right ahead. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, let patience have its perfect work. Amen. And sometimes as believers, we have patience with everybody else. But when it comes to us, we don't have patience with our own self. And yeah. I think that for me, this was a reflective lesson that, you know, the enemy is not going to stop trying you just because you are saved. I mean, the enemy tried Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, do this, this and that. Right. And he was the son of God that could have destroyed him in a, in a quickness, in a moment. Right. So we have to remember that the enemy is always going to come at us life left, right, and sideways. So what we have to do is, as the Bible says, we, what I took from the lesson today is guard your heart. Amen. Because the Bible says out of it flows the issues of life. Yes. So continually guard your heart and right. give yourself a minute when a situation happens to always give that other person the benefit of the doubt because there might be a reason why they're acting in such a um, reactionary way. And you have to respond, like the Bible says, with patience, with kindness. And it's hard to remember those things when you're in, in, in an emotional state. Yep. Yes. But, the, but the lesson is, is pointing us towards we want to guard our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. So I just really appreciated her comment and it, it was lining up with what I felt going through the lesson. Beautiful lesson, Lois. It amen. always is. Amen. 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 Thank you. So now I need some, you got something to say, Elder Lawanda? Uh, good morning, Minister Lois and all the queens and kings. You just muted yourself. <laughs> Elder Lawanda, you muted yourself. Sorry. Okay. Good morning, everyone. But I want to thank you for the lesson, Minister Lois. And like uh, Dr. Denise was saying, learning to be patient with ourselves. ourselves. And not only that, learning to uh, forgive ourselves. Because mm -hmm. Christ said he has already forgiven us. The Lord said he has forgiven us. So why do we not, you know, forgive ourselves? ourselves? So learning how to forgive ourselves and being patient with ourselves and being patient with others. And like you say, another examination of the heart, yep. uh, we exemplifying the fruits of the spirit. Um, I mean, it was just a, a, a beautiful lesson. And I like how you said about, uh, you know, we're going to go through those hills and those valleys wow. and we're going to be in the wilderness, but thank God that he's Lord of the valley, the wilderness, yep. wherever we at, the presence of the Lord will be there. But he said, one of the identified find marks of of us as disciples of his is love. love so we have to walk in love and we have to forgive you know others as well as forgive ourselves and be patient with those even that we're praying for or witnessing to us so thank you so much i love you amen why don't you pray us out while you're there <laughs> Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come before you with humble hearts, O oh Lord God, giving you the praise, the glory, and the honor, thanking you for this lesson on this morning, O oh Lord God, that will help us to examine, examine our hearts, our motives, O oh Lord God, that, Lord God, what we do will be pleasing in your sight. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for Minister Lord's continue to bless her, keep her, and enlarge her territory, Lord God. Thank you for her steady time, Lord God. 
God, how she goes digging, Lord God, so that she can bring your word, Lord God, with proof and backup, Lord God. So bless each one on this line today, Lord God. May they go in the peace of the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord overshadow them, overtake them, oh Lord God. May they have a wonderful, safe weekend, Lord God, this holiday weekend, Lord God. And let us remember our veterans and those that have served our country, oh Lord God. Let us honor them, Lord God, by praying continually for them, oh Lord God. So we praise you and we love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.